Hi, I've had some questions about auto painting, so I'm going to do another one and hopefully answer those questions. Um, you can still email me or make comments and I'll, I'll answer them. This is an image that I did not photograph. I'm going to use it. It belongs to another photographer and I got it from Unsplash. I will put a link to the, um, in the bot, in the description where you can go to get free images to paint and it's unsplash.com make sure you um, give the photographer credit or send them a thank you when you use their images and like I said these are free of charge when I opened up this image I cropped it into a square that using the cropping tool so that I could zoom in to what I wanted to actually be in the picture because there was a whole lot of extra information under window, make sure you have your photo art or your auto painting panel open. Okay, as you can see, mine's checked. It's open right here. I have my color wheel, my brush calibration, and then I always have my toolbar docked on the right side. Your also is probably on the left. It's preference. But I try to explain things and point these things out so that you can um, be working on the same thing that I am if, you, if you're wanting to. When you first have your image ready and you're ready to paint, you don't want to save over your original. So you need to do what is called create an underpainting or create a clone source to let painter know what picture it is to look at when it's painting. So I go to the underpainting and then I click on auto clone and it will set it up for me. Now I could set it up myself, which is what I typically do, but for the sake of anyone who's first learning or um, wanting to know a quick way to do it and it be uh, pr uh, full safe to where you don't mess up and save over your original painting uh, picture, click this auto clone and it sets it up for you. So here it is set up and you, here's your original. You can look up here and always see the name. This one's going to say untitled. That means this is the one that it set up for me. It looks kind of cloudy. That's okay. I'll explain that. So close this out. That's my original. I do not want to save it because I had cropped it. So it looks kind of cloudy because it's got what's called tracing paper over it. So if you hit control T, that will toggle you back and forth to seeing the cloned, what you're cloning, meaning you're able to pick up what's lying underneath. It's not going to be exact, meaning you are actually having a brush stroke that is going to be applied to bring that clone out. So what you'll do, once you have your underpainting, you go to the auto painting panel. And so you have all the stuff that you can change. Now, you're going to click um, Smart Stroke Painting and Smart Settings. What that does is that tells it that it's going to follow the lines, that it's a dog. It's not going to be, you know, painting crazy. It's going to be going, oh, okay, I see that there's something here that I need to follow the lines of. No two auto paintings are ever going to come out the same. That's another cool thing. Um, it's not a filter. This is actually painting in real time. You'll get to watch it happen. Um, so that was one question. And if now to get it to paint, you can change anything you want to, but to get it to paint, I always have my seed speed set at 100% unless you want it to go slower. But hit Control T so you are back to your blank canvas so you can watch it paint and then hit play and watch it paint. Now, what we did not do is we didn't change what brush we wanted. When we clicked Smart Stroke Painting, it pulls up the Smart Stroke brushes. I'll show you. Right here, and this is all of them that we could choose from. Here's a gouache thick round. I've had many people ask about the thick paintings. Let's do it. 
You can paint it again. You can paint it as many times as you want to and see if you like that. And you'll get a different result because it's a different type of uh, brush. And I'm going to stop this. And I'll show you. You could go to um, Pastel Tapered to let it paint. stop that but what I want to show you is that you do not have to use smart strokes um, you leave this clicked but you can go to another category I'm gonna to go to the oils and show you one that I um, sometimes will start out with I don't really use the auto painting anymore because I'll just do the underpaintings myself now but when I first started out I was definitely using auto painting so that I could learn it and get the feel so if you go to the oils category, this is a brush. I'm only going to use brushes that come with Corel Painter because um, they have fabulous brushes. There are so many out there that you can purchase. Um, but honestly, once you learn what brushes that you like, you can always um, tweak them a little bit to, to be for you. But anyway, well, that's a completely different video. So if you go to oils and smeary round, this is a brush that you can use in auto painting and it performs very well. Now, not most all brushes will be able to be used in auto painting panels, but um, some of them won't. So all you have to do, as you saw, what, what I was doing is all you have to do is stop it, grab another brush and paint. And we could sit here and let it do auto painting with different brushes all day long. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you the one that I like, all smeary round for auto painting, and then I'll hit start. And it knows the document again, and you can watch it do the old um, smeary round style. And it gives you a good start. So I'll go in. And you can see it did a real good job still following lines. It does look painterly. Now, I could accept this as it is. There are good brush m m marks. Yes, this looks very nice. I could um, accept this as it is and just walk away and say I'm done, but I am ne never am. I really love to work on dogs specifically. Okay, so I have my smeary round if I want to add a color to change his eyes. I'm going to show you. I'm going to click the Alt to sample an area. And it's saying it's a really dark red. I'm going more for this color here. I'm not on clone. I've got my smeary round. I'm not on clone. And I'm going to paint over this. And this brush performs very much like an oil brush. Um, so it does blend with the color that you're painting on. His eye to me. Look at, I can hit I can still hit control T to look at what I was originally from. So it's just a really dark shadow making it look. So I need to grab my, go to cloner, go to soft clone. There's a soft clone brush to bring back details. I'm resizing my brush. And I'm going to bring back in this area right there, there. Also know that I want to bring this nose back in. Okay, so I've got those key points that need attention. Okay, so then I can go back to my smeary round brush. 
and I can paint in what I was wanting to. I can grab colors and I can add color. Now, when you're painting, you can also have your, I've told you all this before, your reference image um, panel open, and you can open and put your image that you're actually working on in here. if you need to, to look back and forth. I'm going to close my photo art because I don't need it now. I've already done all the auto painting. Um, if you needed to sample colors from the original or if you wanted to look and see how it's looking. This I think is looking good. Things this is kind of a odd. Oh, his fur. So I would want to make this more look like um, see this fur right here. Let me show you. The way it is fanned and then the way the auto painting um, pulled it up made it look weird. So we would work on that. We would sample um, use your some, uh, there's many brushes you could use for this but I'm trying to stay with minimal brushes because I don't want everyone to get confused because I know you can be overwhelmed in the beginning. Yeah, and then you just go and paint in your details. I do not like all this weird stuff that it did, so I'm going to sample the background color, and I'm going to paint over it. just to get rid of and then we'll add some wispy hair again now this I'm going to show you over here this is what the brush looks like for the smeary round when you make it larger which I love so you could put some really good brush strokes in on a different layer. I, what I typically like to do is I'm going to grab the color that's in the area and I'm either going to go lighter or darker. In this case I'm going to go a little bit darker because, well no, actually I'm going to go lighter because this is his light side. Whoa! Oh, I did not have pick up underlying color. Okay, there we go. So, do that, go a little bit lighter, add some more light for highlights with the smeary round brush. And we're going to kind of get away from that look where it's so much of a map. But anyway. Add more character. Need to calibrate this brush. it's uh, doing some weird things so I might be going a little bit heavy-handed they are much better he does have um, around his ear just a little bit of these wispies so we'll add some wispies So, you can go in and, and do as much as you want to now um, to the painting. And I'll show you what the original looked like. 
So you have something to, to base it off of. This one. This is the original. And then this one is the painted. So you can see the difference. I would still do so much more to this. Um, this is just, and you can see some of my examples at my uh, web page of dogs that I've painted. This year I have painted an unbelievable amount. I think I've done one a week for people. So um, there's a, a huge collection that I have out there on my website, MarjorieStallard.com. Um, I will be having information on my website for digital artists with regards to Corel Painter and also Photoshop painting um, so that uh, you all will be able to go out there soon because I've had such um, a request about that. So anyway, I hope this has cleared up some questions regarding using, and we'll close my reference panel but regarding using the auto painting and you can paint again and again and again and again um, I know that was a question I do know one thing I forgot to cover and I'll tell you you can use your selection area and then use your auto I need to open my auto painting panel and you can if you have a selection then it will only paint in this area and you can do, um, we'll say, the sponge dense, and tell it to paint, and it will paint only in that area. So this could be cool for different effects if you are doing a uh, pop art type of um, painting. You could have different things throughout and use different um, styles. I think it'd be kind of neat. This one takes a little bit longer. But I want you to see the effect. I'm going to stop it. Click Control D to unselect. So, but you see, and then if you wanted to choose another area, say here and do a I'll find something different that will be obvious. There we go. So, auto with the the auto painting panel, you can paint again and again and again. You can start it, stop it. You can choose a selection. Um, just remember that the underpainting, the clone, the auto clone will set your document up for you. Auto painting is where you will paint right there and you will choose your brush. Um, and then if you have any questions, just let me know. Hopefully this clears a couple of your all's questions up. Thanks.